So we're in store here with Dean Saunders. How are you, pal? Very good, very good. Yeah, so we're going for a game of golf now, aren't we? But the weather's, we a, bit, the weather's a bit dodgy. But I know, I know. Um, I'm, a, I'm not a fair weather golfer. I Playing play all weathers. All weather. Excellent. So we've just been round the store. You've just picked what you're going to use. Yeah. So we've got some nice paradigm irons. Yeah. Have you used them before? Well, I uh, I hired a set uh, last summer at Kingswood Golf Club. Okay. Uh, I didn't have any clubs with me on the train, and I hired a set, and I hit them really good. Excellent. So um, they go miles. Right. But uh, the wedge and the sand wedge, I'm not sure about whether I'd be able to control the the, the shorter irons. So yeah. I'll have a go today, see how I get on with them. And you've also chose the Paradigm Woods as well. Yeah. So have you used them before? Um, not really, no. No. Okay. So, um, so I, I use the Paradigm Driver. So. You? Yeah, yeah, it's getting tighter than next week. So <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they're good. They're really good. To be fair, um, you'll enjoy it in them. Really I've good. I've got a tailor-made driver at the minute, which is um, a real old one. You know the white ones. The, the white RBZ. Head. RBZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hit it straight. Okay. So um, I know I'm losing a bit of distance because yeah. technology's moved on, but yeah. Uh, we'll try with this one today. Hi, welcome to another video with Golf Clubs for Cash. We're down here at Wilmslow Golf Club and this week we've got Dean Saunders. Afternoon, nice how are you? Nice to meet you, mate. And you, yeah. So you, we've Mark? also Hi, got mate. Mark, who's one of our dispatch operatives at the Warrington store. We've already played the first nine here at Wilmslow, so we're just going to have a little nine-hole match. Because it's a three-ball, we're just going to play a nine-hole stable for the full handicaps. So, you ready to go? Yeah, well, I've heard how good you are. You looking forward to it? And Mark's playing off eight, aren't he? Yeah. But apparently he used to play off one. Well. We've already found that out. <laughs> on Wikipedia. <laughs> we'll check so, his handicap yeah. in a It's minute. amazing how many people cheat at golf, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Come on then, let's see how it goes. Come on then. Yeah, it's okay. Tenth yeah. hole here at Wilmslow is 355 yard par four, and we're all on a shot. Dean's playing off four, Mark's playing off four, and I get five. Good shot. It's posture, grip. Like, ridiculous. Look at that. Hey, trying to play off eight. <laughs> Who are you trying to kid? <laughs> no, you're trying to kid. Come on. How long have you been playing golf, Dean? Since I was about 15. My dad, my dad took me up to Morriston Golf Club in Swansea. And my dad was sport Billy. My dad played for Liverpool for 12 years. Got transferred to Swansea when he was 31. Met my mum. Stayed there all his life. So I was brought up. I played cricket for BSC Valindra Steelworks. I played. Bowls for the Raven Pub. I played snooker for the Convelling Club. I was running in the in the school sports day. I was in Penland School, rough school, and nobody wanted to do sports day. One day at the sports day, I was in the I was in the cross country, hundred meter sprint, javelin, and long jump. And my dad turned up at four o'clock. At the end of the day, after I'd done all the heats and everything, and I was in the 800, I filled in for someone doing the 800. Went off too fast, my, light, my lights went out. Second lap, my dad, I see him on the third bench shaking his head. What have you been doing? I said, what? He goes, what have you been eating? I said, I've been here all day. I've been like, so I got my competitive side from my dad. That's what he was like. He didn't hammer me, but he always said to me like, you know, if I played cricket, how many runs you get? 25. Why didn't you get 50? Yeah. If you get to 25, you should get 50. And it, it was like, don't tell me you give your wicket away. No. How do you do in the running today? Come third. Who beat you? How can he beat you? What have you been doing? So he was always questioning me about doing better. So um, anyway, he got me into golf as well. I'm glad he did, because my son plays golf now as well, so I have a game with him. Yeah, so Callum yeah. was meant to come down and play with us today, but family and 
other commitments she couldn't make it unfortunately but we'll have to get them on under the thumb you mean <laughs> that's what you're trying to say I I'll let you say that yeah under the thumb no he's not he's, he's, his fiance's got to work so he couldn't come Going out to the right. So I've got one three eight. Just gonna hit an eight iron. Down a lie though. That's so unlucky. It's killed it, hasn't it? Yeah, it just the plugged. killed it. Yeah. Shot. Go. Go. Nah, it's just spun up on me. Yeah, well out. Do you know what? I hit that so far behind the ball, hoping that it would just go. Yeah, just fat it out. Yeah, but it, I, it went a bit further than I thought. Sit down. Yeah, take that one away. Good roll. Oh no. No. It. no. See, when the camera was on, he never done that once on the front nine, did he? De accelerated. Yeah. And he's a character, and I think that's what's missing in all sports these days, is characters. Yeah. And he is one. Well, if you remember years ago when I played football, the chairman was the was from normally from the town. Yes. And he was the richest man in the town. Yeah. Or one of them, or wanted to just show everybody, I am the richest man in the town. I was at school, I had nothing when I started, and I've now become the richest man in the town. Yeah. And they were a supporter of the club. So every decision they made, was from their heart. Yep. So they would, the head would go out the window yes. because they wanted the team to win. But you get these owners now from wherever, Saudi Arabia or yep. America, they don't care no. about the clubs really. And Lee it's last year. It's just a year, toy. Yes. Lee last year won the Challenge Cup. And that's normally for the likes of Wigan, uh, St. Helens, yeah. Leeds, the big boys. Yeah. You don't expect a minor team like Lee. No. To win the Challenge Cup. And it's just yeah. fantastic.
forks. Great drive. Good shot. Amazing. There's no excuse for us, is there? He exit dead straight with one arm. Yeah. Do you want the one? Yeah. Give me that. It must be the club. Different clubs, yeah. Before, yeah. Yeah, they might just be sitting when I put them down behind the ball. They might just be sitting. The face might be just a bit more a different bit. to work the way mine lays. The, the shafts as well will be different, so all last different shafts, yeah. different weight maybe. Different yeah. head. Swing that'll, that'll all affect your swing. Yeah. Right. It's like an in swinging corner. So look, I've got to yeah, bend yeah. through that gap. So imagine I, I was it. taking a corner and your right foot comes out from the inside out. So I'm going to imagine this club is my right foot. In swinging corner. Oh, that was so nearly very good. That's a runner. Named a set of clubs that you'll know, okay. and I named them. All oh, right, okay, go on. Can you remember Hippo Golf Clubs? Yeah, yes. yeah. So I was playing for Derby, and there's a friend of mine called Howard Thacker, and he owned House and Golf Clubs. Yeah. Right. His dad. I think what happened. His dad retired, and he sold pet foods, and he gave his sister some money, and him some money to start a business. I'm sure Howard started in golf clubs. So DJ Russell, the ex-pro golfer, who introduced me to Howard, Howard was asking me to invest in the company. So he asked DJ while we were there, what can I bring out that nobody else has got? And at the time there was no metal headed drivers, there were only wooden or simon clubs. Yeah, yeah. So he said, Taylor Maid are, are about to bring out to get the clubs, he used to get the heads, the shafts all separate and they put them together in Burton in the factory. So he got them imported from yeah. 
from Thailand. So he said, go and get a hundred and I'll give them to the members. And he said, you're off and running. So he said, well, what shall I ask him to make? So DJ got a piece of paper out the bag, out of his bag, and he drew a metal-headed driver shape. Or the head of a driver, yeah? He said, you need it that shape. It's big at the back, you know, so he said, that's the one they're going to bring out. So as we were playing at Kettleston Park Golf Club while he, while he asked him. So we were walking down the fairway and he said, what can we call it then? I said, well, you can't call it the whale. That's already out, the walrus. The shark, Greg Norman's already got that. We can't bring that. So it was a matter of time before we got to something that obviously connects with Housen. So I was thinking of all the animals and eventually I got to it. The hippo, the Housen hippo. There you go. He went brilliant. We got the club. So DJ Russell designed it. I named it. And Howard made five and a half million. And wow. didn't give us anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. So I Amazing. made that club. We, yeah. we still get hippos in a golf club today. Yeah. yeah. So it's par five this. 483 yards or so. So I'm not going to try and do anything silly. Just hit the hybrid down there and lay up. Arby, you can't use a rangefinder, this is a proper game on TV. <laughs> you can use your teammates. Yeah, but then I'd have a caddy carry in my bag instead of a trolley. I've got a watch <laughs> because I know it's illegal to use your rangefinder. <laughs> I'll get Ethan to edit out every time I've used it. Such a bad shot. Go. Come on, come on. Can't give you that, Ray. I don't want it, mate. It wasn't. So, obviously, you are a manager, a football manager, and I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah. So what advice would you be giving me about this right now? Right now, back to basics. I just have to start that. Yeah, yeah. So I can't go back to them. Yeah, obviously, if you're hitting your chips fast, that's right. you don't normally. Then we'll back down and run, it'll 
see. You blame in the conditions, you blame in the clubs, you blame course. in everything. Yeah, the wind, the rain, have a look in the mirror. The grassland. Have a look in the mirror. Okay. Get back to basics then. That's your last week. So we've just been saying there about you used to be a football manager. Um obviously I'm struggling a little bit. Um yeah. but last week we had Beck Walker on. Um you give him his debut at Wrexham. Yeah. yeah, nice lad. Played for Ireland. Yes, he did, yeah. Yeah. Um I thought he'd go on and do better than he's done, actually. Uh he still made a, a living out of football. He said he's done his ACL three times as yeah, well. Yeah, he got a few bad injuries at the wrong time. Yeah. Well, and you need that, like you need a bit of luck. I had a bit of luck. I, I, went, I got released from Swansea on a free. I got released from Cardiff on a free, told I wasn't good enough, by John Bond and Alan Durban. And I went to Brighton on trial. Everybody thinks you just arrived in the Premier League. You don't. Most players have got a tale like this, where you've ended up grafting and, you know, Released twice from Swansea and Cardiff when I was 18, 19. How does it feel being released from Swansea? Because they're well, your hometown club, aren't they? Yeah, and I was like on the scrap heap. Yeah. Couldn't get a club, never got a phone call. And when I'm managing, I'm able to tell players this. You never know who's watching again. When you play any game of football, whether it's in the reserves, whether it's behind closed doors and you think no one's there, Chris Catlin went to the only reserve game I played for Swansea at Millwall. It's the only game I played on the reserves. I played the first team and I had one reserve game and then I went to Cardiff and it was at the game when I scored two in the game. And he looked down the release list that the PFA release every year and he seen my name on it and he asked, phone me up, do you want to come on trial? Right. So I went to Brighton on trial, got a contract. 200 quid a week, first game of the season, Alan Bailey, the striker, goes over on his ankle, and that was the I come on, scored, and I scored seven in the first seven games. After getting released from Swansea and Cardiff, yeah, three and a half months after, four months I'd say, after, I got picked to play for Wales. I can't fight England, I couldn't believe it, never played for Wales at any level, and after getting released, it shows how quick things can turn on their head. I got seven games, seven goals, and I can get picked to play for Wales against the Republic of Ireland. Nice. Imagine if I just hold this. I mean, it was an important chip in my career and I've managed to pull it off. Given me first one today. Cheers, Dean. If you had one more game to play, where would it be and why? As a manager? As a player? Player. One more game. 
more game to play. If I could play one more game of football, it would be against Romania in Cardiff for Wales. When we had to beat them to qualify for the World Cup in America. And if you remember, Paul Morgan hit the crossbar. Right. Um, and with, I think it was about five minutes to go to make it 2 1 to us. I'd scored early on in the game. Hadji scored first. Uh, ball slipped through Neville Southall's grasp from about 35 yards. I got a tap in equaliser and then we got a penalty. And everybody says, you know, on the pitch, I think Ian Rush, Mark Hughes, Brian Giggs, Gary Speed, me. How did Paul Morgan take the penalty? But he took the pens. He took three and scored three for us. He took them for Swindon. Um, and we missed the penalty and we ended up not qualifying and that was all the gutted I've ever been. And if you said to me, any regrets in your career, that is the only regret I've got. But I my memories of him, we had some great games for Wales together. I think I had 75 caps, most football he played. So we had a great time. Nice. Good shot. Just a little bit left, but. Oh, it's behind us. Yeah, this is drawing them round. That's a good shot. Shot, Ma. Great shot. Oh, what a oh. shot.
Oh! Effort. Do you know what? Didn't break at all. Though. You've padded well. Just they've not gone in, have they? Nope. Never See, any criticism. doubt. There's some people it eggs them on. You got you got <laughs> you got to work it out. In life, that's the finest par four you have ever seen in your life. Though. It was. <laughs> Looks right. Oh yes, Ray. Like it. Shot. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just such a bad putt. Well, Give me that. that. Give me that. Give that. So the 18th hole here at Wilmslow Golf Club, but it's our ninth hole and our final hole. Yeah. So Mark's three points ahead. We think, we think the graphic will be on screen, but yeah, we'll add them up again. But I've got a feeling this is a par five. Yeah. If Mark birdies this, yeah, are we right into? He gets 45 um, points, Stapleford. Blatant cheating, playing off eight. We're going to write to England golf. When he's a one handicapper, <laughs> <laughs> playing, he's got you got forty five points in the mud, in the rain round Wimslow. How can you even? How can you even stand up straight? I'm speechless because <laughs> the excuses you give him because you played badly. I haven't you, played badly. I'm one over par. You played badly if I've got forty two points. How? Because I beat you. Yeah, but I haven't played badly. You've played. Out of your skin, haven't you? For an ace handicapper. Yeah. <laughs> Disgrace. <laughs> oh, that is the best of the day. That's a joke, that. Ball. Shot. Birdie. He can reach in two now. From there. Great ball. See it bounce? Oh, really? I hit me five iron further. I do like hitting it, but. No, that's fine, no, I think. Got it's under that. Oh my word, it's all over it. Oh, Eagle. Okay. Ten, eight yards right. This ball's going to draw without me trying. Go, go. That could be bunker. I think it is as well. Shot. Get in. Get in. Oh. Where's that been all day? Oh, no, I'm not. He 
He's doing it. Do I need the ball marker, Dean? No. It's a good effort, that, you know. Do you want it back? I'd get a shot there normally. Eight, one eight, eight point three. Ten. I get ten, don't I? On a slope. He's doing it on purpose. Get well in. done. Well played. Well played, Mark. All jokes aside, well played. Thank you. Well, do you know what? He looks a bit like Darren Clark, doesn't he? He does, actually, yeah. Doesn't he? Well played, That's mate. Right, I enjoyed a that. slim Darren Clark. <laughs> so. <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Good win, mate. Yes, enjoyed it. Played very well. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're very welcome. Coming again? If I'm invited, yes, I'd be an honour to. Of course, mate. Do you enjoy it, then? Yeah, good. Like I, I just got beat twenty points. <laughs> like, I mean, if I was you, I'd just cut him out of the video completely. <laughs> he did play some ridiculous good golf, though. To he be got fair. forty-three points. I know, ridiculous. But could have got forty-five. Yeah. As well. Sad end. No, but you played well. Yeah, didn't I, I, yeah. it's the best I've played this year. I'll Is it? It's good come It's only, it's only yeah. March. I know. <laughs> and what's, what's seriously, ahead? Ray, honestly, playing golf with you. Any children growing up or teenagers who say they can't, I can't do it, Dad. I can't do that. I can't do that. You, to me, they're inspirational. How you can play golf like that, like you did. Cheers, I mean, mate. it's unbelievable. No, you should. They should. We should. We were talking earlier. Yeah. You should bring all the naughty kids along, and say, look, watch him. That's how you do it. Determination's obviously. You know, you've not like everybody feels sorry for themselves down now and again, don't they? We all do. I, but you've that, obviously that, not. That's the one thing I'll never do. I'll never yeah. feel sorry for myself. I mean, I haven't played very well today, but I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm not going to hide no, the fact I haven't played very when well. you're playing golf with Ray, you forget he's only playing with one hand. You forget. Is it? Is it? You know, I, you know where I'm coming from? You forget he plays with one hand. He's hitting the ball past us. Yeah. With one hand. Massive. Yeah. Amazing. He's... And he was in hospital this morning. I with wasn't going to mention with, it, but I with, was. With, with asthma. <laughs> I was. Allegedly. <laughs> oh, it was nerves. No. It was nerves because he I was coming here today. Drug tested. Yeah. But so, thanks for inviting me anyway. No, no um, problem. And, and um, my clubs that I, I'm using, I putted well with this. You did, to be fair. Cleveland putter. It's only like cheap. Let's say cheap. Was it 90 quid, something like that? 79.99 in golf clubs. Is it? <laughs> Brand new. Yeah. So I putted well with that. Um, my... You learn something every day, don't you, about golf. So I've used the Par Paradigm, Paradigm X, X irons. Um, I didn't realise, but they're heavier than my clubs. Yeah. And in the, on the front nine, I was like probably leaving the face open a bit because they're a little bit heavier to swing. And I was leaving everything right, not a slice, but I was just leaving it right. And my driver, I just couldn't hit my driver. The, when I used your driver... Yeah. Uh, 777 pound. <laughs> uh, I could hit your driver, couldn't I? Yeah, yeah. And, and that, but that's the great thing about what we do at Golf Clubs for Cash. So you've come in this morning, you've picked up a second hand irons and a second hand driver. You've come on the course, it might not necessarily be for you. So just bring them back and we'll swap them for something else or we'll give you your money back. Yeah, I, I got, after nine also, I got, I got used to starting to swing them I suppose that you know I should have gone on the range first that, that is another fair point so um, a lot of people do come into our place and um, they do take clubs out and they'll use them once and then they'll think that's it but it does take time to yeah. get used to new clubs the different weights different size heads maybe different shafts than you used to yeah so but it's trial and error isn't it yeah. unless you go for a specialist fitting um, it's, it is just trial and error, but that is the great thing about what we do in our gaff. Um, yeah. You know, there's nowhere else, I don't think, that you could just go take some clubs out and then bring them back. They wouldn't want them back, so... Yeah, it's good, though. Yeah. I mean, if I had picked your driver up, I wouldn't have known. Obviously, you've got an expensive shaft in it. Yeah. I wouldn't have known, and it's set up for you. For me, yeah. So you've got a draw bias on your head. On the and... Yeah. 
the and weight. And offset the weight into fade, yeah. Yeah, so it's set up, because you're playing with one arm, it's set up for you to, <coughs> you probably, I don't know, you've got like your natural shots of fade. So I, I, I've set it into fade, um, just because my bad shot is a pull <laughs> or a hook. Um, and I've set it into draw, just to close that face a little bit. And that's the best shop I've ever been in this morning. It's uh, it's like a sweet shop, isn't it? Golf it is. clubs for cash, warehouse. And you walk in, if you like golf, you don't know where to look. There's clubs everywhere, bags, T-shirts, putters. Um, you could spend all day in there. Yeah. And obviously Didn't Callum's he? got his now to try as yeah. well. Yeah, so that's good. So, yeah. yeah he's got no excuse. Final, final question then. What's your predictions for the Masters? Uh... Do you know what? The last time I got asked this is it question, <laughs> it's Matt Kuchar. Um, I'll never, I'll never get live that one down because uh, if you remember Alan Brazil last year, they set me up. Alan Brazil, Ali McCoyston, Gabby Agbon Lahore, they were on the breakfast show, um, and the producer rang me and said, "You know, who can you can you predict someone to win the Masters?" So Matt Kuchar nearly won the week before. Uh, I don't know what the tournament was. There's like the Travellers or something like that. He lost in a playoff, and I thought he's on form. And, and he got interviewed afterwards, and he said, uh, "My coach has come down with me this week, and my game's never been in better shape. I'm playing better than I've ever played in my life." And I thought I'll have a bet on him for the Masters, <laughs> but he wasn't even in it. <laughs> so I tipped him. I think it went viral everywhere because they they just it was like a bit of a prank call. They called me up live on the end, said, "Who'd you tip?" Alan Brazil said, "What time's he teeing off?" I said, I don't, I'm not sure, Al. He goes, he's not even playing, you numpty. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, he's not that good anyway. So um, this year, anyway, it's hard to look past Scheffler. Yeah. But there's a man creeping. He's creeping up the rails. And, I, and he's played well last week. Matsuama. He's won the Masters in the past. Yeah. He used to play every week, if you remember. And I think eventually it got to him and he had to have a hip operation and he was out for six months with his hip. And he's been back now about six months, I think, something like that with his, since he's recovered. And he's just started, I've been watching him and Callum, my boy, backs him every week anyway. Yeah. And he finished 15 under last week. Um, so he's won the tournament before. Well, I, I'm going to have I, a bet on him. I bet on him when he won it last as Did well. Did he? So, yeah. Was he 33 to one or something like that, wasn't he? It was something like that way, and he was outside yeah. odds, but yeah, there. Uh, so, but Sheffield's playing well. Rory McElroy, you know, if if it's if he plays like he can play, being from the north west as well, obviously, um, Warrington, north west, you live in Cheshire, don't you? Yeah, it's got to be a shout out there for Fleetwood as well. Tommy Fleetwood, yeah, should really stick up from Luke Littler in the darts, yeah, yeah, he's from Warrington, isn't he? Yep. St. Helens, but yeah. Represents I played him on Talk Sport the other day. Did you? Yeah, beat him. No, I never. No. We played, um, me and Danny Murphy. I played with Gary and Price, and Danny played with Luke Little, and we played two legs live on Jim White Show. Drew one all. But uh, it was great to play with him. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, thanks for Wilmslow for letting us come down um, today, and thank you yeah. to yourself See for you coming. In the summer. No, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks, no problem, mate. Cheers, well, nice well one done. for the game. Bandit. Thanks, well, done. Well, done. <laughs> well done, Mark. Well Cheers, Heath. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to the Golf Clubs for Cash YouTube channel. Check out our Instagram and Facebook as well. And we'll see you next time.